Hi everybody, hopefully you are doing well. Today we are going to take our second part of lesson 1 of chapter 7, Transport and Defense. So we were talking about systems, now we move to the circulatory system. As you can see here, the heart, blood and blood vessels make up the circulatory system. Now, circulatory system transport nutrients, gases, uh, wastes, and other substances through the body. Blood vessels transport blood to all organs in the body. Because your body uses oxygen nutrients continually, continuously, your circulatory system transports blood between the heart, lungs, and other organs more than uh, 1,000 times each day. Now, how actually this works, your heart is actually is made up of a muscle or muscle cells that constantly contract and relax. Now, these contraction pump blood in your heart out of the heart to the rest of your body. When your heart muscles relax, blood from the rest of your body enters the heart. So, blood travels through your body in tiny tubes called uh, the blood vessels or called vessels. Now, if all the blood vessels in your body were uh, laid end to end in a single line, it would be more than 95,000 kilometers long. So the three main type of blood vessels are arteries, veins and capillaries. Arteries carry blood away from your heart. Remember that? Arteries do that. They carry the blood away from your heart. Usually this blood is oxygen rich and contain nutrients except for the blood in the, the pulmonary arteries now uh, that contains carbon dioxide. Now arteries are large and surrounded by muscle cells that help blood move through the vessels faster. So veins transport blood that contains carbon dioxide back to your heart except for the blood in the pulmonary veins which is oxygen rich. So it is actually working on two sides. Capillaries are very tiny vessels that enable oxygen, carbon dioxide and nutrients to move between your circulatory system and your entire body. So remember that blood enters the heart through two upper chambers called the atria, okay, and it leaves the heart through the lower chamber called the ventricles. We have right atrium, left atrium, left ventricle, in right ventricle parts of the heart so coming to blood uh, blood uh, as you know it circulates through vessels and has several parts now, the liquid part of blood is called plasma and contains nutrients water and carbon dioxide Blood also contain red blood cells platelets and white blood cells the red blood cells RBC carry oxygen the platelets help the body heal when you get a cut White blood cells help the body defend itself from toxins and diseases. You, uh, now you will read uh, more about white blood cells uh, in the coming uh, clip. Now everyone has uh, red blood cells, however different people have different proteins on the surface of their red blood cells as you can see here in this table. Scientists classify uh, these different red blood cells proteins into groups called blood types. Uh, people with uh, A proteins on their red blood cells have type A blood. Uh, people with B protein on their red blood cells have type B blood. Some people have both A and B proteins on their red blood cells. So they have type AB blood. Uh, people with type O blood have neither A nor B proteins on the surfaces of their red blood cells. Now, medical uh, professionals use blood type to determine which type of blood a person can receive from a blood donor. For example, uh, because people with type O blood have no proteins on their surfaces of their red blood cells, they can receive blood only from a donor who also has a type of O blood. Moving on to the lymphatic system, uh, have you ever had a cold and found it painful to swallow? This can happen if your tonsils swell. Uh, tonsils are small organs on both sides of your throat. Uh, they are uh, part of the lymphatic system. Uh, the spleen, the thymus, bone marrow and lymph 
uh, nodes are also part of the lymphatic system. The spleen store blood uh, for use in an emergency. The thymus, the spleen and the bone marrow make white blood cells. So your lymphatic system actually has three main functions. The first one is removing excess fluid around organs. Second one producing white blood cells. And the third thing, the function they do is absorbing, absorbing and transporting fats. The lymphatic system actually helps your body maintain fluid homeostasis. About 65% of the human body is water. Most of this water is inside cells. Sometimes when water wastes and nutrients move between capillaries and organs, not all of the fluid is taken up by the organs. When fluid builds up around organs, swelling can occur. To prevent swelling, the lymphatic system removes uh, that fluid. Uh, on the other hand, uh, lymphatic vessels are all over your body, uh, as you can see here. Fluid that travels through the lymph vessels flow into organs called the lymph nodes. Uh, humans have more than 500 lymph nodes. The lymph nodes work together and protect the body by removing toxins, wastes, and other harmful substances. The lymphatic system makes white blood cells, as we said. They help the body defend against the infections, as I told you in the previous uh, a slide that you will learn about white blood cells. So there are many different type of white blood cells. Uh, a lymphocyte is a type of white blood cell uh, that is uh, made in the thymus. Uh, as you can see here, thymus and the spleen or the bone marrow. So the lymphocytes protect the body by traveling through the circulatory system, defending against any infection if if a body gets it. Now, the lymphatic system protects your body from harmful substances and infections. The resistance to specific pathogens or disease-causing disease agents is called immunity. The skeletal system produces immune cells and the circulatory system transports them throughout your body. Immune cells include the lymphocytes and other white blood cells. So that these cells detect viruses, bacteria and other foreign substances that are normally made in the body. The immune cells attack and destroy them as you can see here in this figure that how uh, the immune cell is actually destroying a pathogen. If the body is exposed to the same bacteria, virus or a substance later, some immune cells remember and make proteins called antibodies. Now these antibodies recognize specific proteins on the harmful agents and help the body to fight infection faster. Because there are many different types of bacteria and viruses, humans make billions of different types of antibodies. Each type of antibody responds to a different harmful agent. agent. Now there are different types of uh, diseases. There are two main groups of disease. Uh, in, uh, infectious and non-infectious uh, as you can see here. Infectious diseases are caused by pathogens, uh, pathogens such as bacteria and viruses, while infectious diseases uh, are usually contagious which means they can be spread from one person to another. The flu is an example of an infection disease uh, these days the coronavirus that you know. So viruses that invade organ systems of the body such as the respiratory system cause infectious diseases. Now, non-infectious disease, on the other hand, is caused by the environmental or a genetic disorder, not a pathogen, not, not, not a virus. Skin cancer, for example, diabetes and allergies are examples of non-infectious diseases. Non-infectious diseases are not uh, contagious. They cannot be spread from person to a person. Now, the human body has many ways of protecting itself from viruses, bacteria, and harmful substances. Skin and mucus are part of the first line of defense. They prevent toxins and other substances from entering the body. Mucus is a thick gel-like substance in the nostrils, trachea and lungs. A mucus traps harmful substances and prevents them from entering your body. The second line of defense is the immune response. In the immune response, white blood cells attack and destroy harmful substances. The third line uh, now, how do they do that? This is an uh, uh, example of how white blood cells attack pathogens or bacteria. Now, the third line of defense protects your body against uh, substances that have infected the body before. Uh, as, we know, as we have learned about immune cells, they make antibodies that destroy the harmful substances. 
Vaccines are also used to help uh, the body develop antibodies against infectious diseases. For example, many people get an influenza vaccine annually to protect them against the flu. So this is the end of uh, this lesson. If there is any question, please feel free to ask and uh, please solve your section review and uh, workbook related pages and send them on the Pioneer as an email attachment. Thank you very much.